About one in every 120 babies is born with some form of heart defect. This animation is intended to show how different real-time computer graphics techniques have emerged as important tools to aid in the diagnostic and surgical planning processes in patients with congenital heart disease. Magnetic resonance imaging, in short MRI, is an imaging modality capable of producing three-dimensional morphological information. Contrast-enhanced angiography data, as is shown here volume rendered, can be used to determine the course and origin of vessels external to the heart. Clearly visible in the data set is the vena cava superior and connected veins. In this view, the arrows point to the ascending and descending aorta, the right and left pulmonary arteries, and the right and left pulmonary veins. On the right, we see a volume rendering of the heart recorded at late diastole. On the left, individual slices from this data set are reformatted interactively. Guided by the volume rendering, the reformatted slices can be obtained from any angle at any position. From these slices, a morphological diagnosis can be obtained. With some effort, patient-specific three-dimensional models of the heart can be reconstructed from these MRI datasets. We are looking at the heart of a 10-year-old girl who previously had major surgery. She was born with the diagnosis double outlet right ventricle. In other words, the aorta and the main pulmonary artery both originated in the right ventricle. Furthermore, the aorta is located to the right of the pulmonary artery. By means of surgery, a patch forming a tunnel was inserted to lead the blood from the left ventricle to the aorta. This image shows a different cut through the heart. Again, we see the tunnel leading the blood from the left ventricle to the aorta. The MRI examination shows leakages at two positions in the tunnel. The bigger of the two septal defects is seen in this image. A second and smaller leakage was detected at another location as shown by this MRI image. It is the surgeon's job to repair these deficiencies. Untreated, they would cause breathlessness, poor weight gain, and an increased susceptibility to infections. A real-time cardiac surgery simulator was recently developed. It allows pediatric cardiac surgeons to evaluate different surgical strategies preoperatively. In the remainder of this movie, we will be watching annotated simulations of several surgical strategies and explorations. The goal is to determine the optimal incision points to allow the surgeon to reach in and close the two septal defects. An incision is made at the aortic root. When the tissue is pulled aside and fixed using the available instruments, a view of the interior tunnel is revealed. The tunnel passageway is quite narrow. The surgeon pulls the tissue aside to see if any of the two defects are revealed. As none of the defects can be located, an incision point at the aortic root is discarded. A different approach would be to enter through the right atrium. A new incision is made and the tissue pulled aside. We zoom in on the incision point. When grabbing the septum separating the right atrium from the tunnel, an irregularity of the septum is detected. Being in a virtual environment, we can now move inside the atrium to get a closer look at the area. A septal defect, which turns out to be the smaller of the two, is located. It seems that the chosen incision point in the right atrium 
allows reasonable access to the defect. In order to localize the remaining defect, access through the right ventricle is achieved. When we zoom in on the incision point, the bigger of the two septal defects appears immediately. It is of vital importance to close this hole due to its size and position in order to avoid long-term damage to the heart and lungs. To conclude, the surgeon has now learned the position of the two incisions that are required to close the septal defects in this patient. One must be packed through the right atrium, the other through the right ventricle.